Good morning, everyone, and thank you for starting your day out with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. I'm going to start the show off today talking with Dr. Stephen Ragusia. Now, I've had Dr. Ragusia on before. We've talked about everything from depression and anxiety to the impact of divorce on children. Dr. Ragusia has over 30 years of expertise in a wide range of mental health matters. This morning, we're going to talk about kind of a timely subject and a disturbing subject and that's psychotic killers. Now from the moment that the news broke out of another shooting in Colorado, the question reverberated why. Aurora, Columbine, Tucson, Virginia Tech, as these tragedies keep happening, people keep wondering why do they keep happening and what could possibly trigger someone to go to this extreme. Dr. Ragusia, thank you for being with me this morning. Thank you for having me. Dr. Ragusio, like I just mentioned in the introduction, what could possibly trigger someone to do a mass killing? Well, it's, uh, it's actually a pretty complicated problem. Um, in some ways, in other ways, it's simple. Um, first of all, we live in a culture of violence. Um, the American Psychological Association, every eight years or so for the past 30 years, has produced a white paper to be distributed to Congress and the White House about the impact of media violence in our culture. Um, we know, for example, that uh, people who watch a lot of TV and a lot of movies wind up seeing a lot of violent images and they are much more likely to act out in violent ways than people who don't watch those shows. Mm -hmm. um, so that's part of the issue. We live in a culture where there are a lot of guns and that's part of the issue. Uh, in other nations where guns are not so readily available, people tend not to kill other people quite so often. Um, uh, now past that, um, psychotic killers uh, like the one that we just saw uh, uh, unfortunately in Colorado um, is something that's really, that topic is difficult for a lot of people to deal with mm -hmm. because they look at it and they go, what the heck is going on with that guy? What mm -hmm. is that about? And as a forensic psychologist, what I've done for the last 35 years is answered that question for the court. So I go in and I evaluate these people and I find out what it is that's going on inside them. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it breaks down into two groups. Um, number one is um, something that falls within the rubric that you used earlier, which is psychotic killers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what that means is that such people are genuinely mentally ill. Um, they, I think probably this young man in Colorado was a very bright, successful young man, and during young adulthood he experienced the onset of a disease we call schizophrenia. Um, now I don't know if that's what his diagnosis is going to be, I've never examined him, um, but my bet is that that's what we're going to find out, is something like that was going on with him. Mm -hmm. um, the same thing was true with Ted Kaczynski, for example, uh, the Unabomber, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of these people that we hear about. When you actually do the evaluation on them, what you find out is that they are often very bright people who got sick, mm -hmm. and they wind up having delusions and hallucinations that make them think that killing other people not only is okay, but is the right thing to do. It's so hard to fathom, and we have to take a quick quick break right now, but we're going to come back after these messages and talk more about this disturbing but yet timely subject. Stay with us, everyone. <laughs> 